Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to bring you another amazing guest. And um, so first, before I go forward, I just want to thank everyone for looking at my channel, really helping me grow it, really helping me, you know, you sending me so many suggestions to bring people on. And it's just been great. All the comments are amazing. So, so subscribing, liking, commenting is just so powerful. So I just thank you from the bottom of my heart. It means a lot to me that you care to bring these people on. So today <laughs> I have Robert and, and Robert I met because uh, as you all know, the Ukraine is uh, in a war now and it's horrible. And so um, Robert had reached out to me on Instagram and he was living in the Ukraine and um, he obviously uh, needed to get out. Robert here, as you probably cannot tell, is a transsexual man. So he passes great. He lives his life as a man, but he couldn't stay in the Ukraine because, I mean, we'll let him tell the story. But so I, I, I got a friendship with Robert and we all got together and helped him get out of the Ukraine, which was so insane. Oh my God. That that whole story is a whole podcast in itself. So, so without further ado, I, I just want to uh, introduce you to Robert. And then, Robert, why don't you just tell us all about yourself, like where you know where you're originally from, your age, all of that kind of stuff. Hi, my name is Robert. I'm from Iraq. I'm 32 years old. A trans man, originally from Iraq. Um, been living there till 19. Left. Well, ran from there when I was 19, uh, lived in Ukraine for 14 years. And then with the war happened, I came here to Sweden by wow. the help of Buck. So, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, gosh. Okay. So you were orig you're originally from Iraq, right? Yeah. That's, yes. So can you tell us a little bit of your backstory? I think it's fascinating. So you grew up in Iraq. And then tell me how you decided that you needed to transition and what age that was. Uh, I, everything was normal till the age of seven. It started with refusing wearing a dress. Um, all of my life, I thought I thought about my transition life of 24 years because I thought maybe because I'm affected of the society of uh, the Muslims countries, um, like the girl can't do anything she wants, not like the guy. Um, but it was no, <laughs> it's inside of me. I hated my body, I hated everything. Yeah, so start from that, uh, I told my parents by like uh, the age of seven, yelled that, and then problems, and then I knew because of I had I had a like a bigger sister who they killed because of this situation, but she didn't shut up. So this is the problem. So she got killed. Um, I didn't know about all of this, but then like my uncle told me. So I tried, I, I really tried, even I went to Ukraine and then I went back there um, just to talk my parents out, like help me. I didn't know about transition and everything. Just like, um, there's something wrong with me. I don't like this body. I feel shameful of my breast and stuff um, when someone give me compliments. So the best solution was to like, if I get married. Um, when I knew about that, I ran out that night, so. Yeah, and went to Ukraine and not come back. So I have no so, relationship with them for 14 years. Sorry. No, no. So, so, so uh, I, I want to make sure I don't over talk you because our delay. So that, so I want to know about your sister being killed. Why did she get killed? Well, because she, she, like she didn't understand. She didn't like um, her body. She didn't understand, and this is like in the 80s, so this kind of situation, I don't think like people even like in Iraq and in those countries knew about this. Uh, all she knew, like, this is why I had, I don't know her, she's older than me, uh, that she didn't shut up. So oh, because she, 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 she was a trans person as well? or, uh, uh, or She was just asking them, something wrong with me, I don't want to get married, I like I don't like my body, I feel shame. I Please help me. Um, we don't have like a psychologist or anything. They think this is for yeah our therapy. So that was the solution, just to kill. Oh so, my God! I'm so yeah. sorry, my friend. That just yeah. is heartbreaking. Yeah, so, so 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 yeah, because you Iraq is a, a Muslim country, and you don't have LGBT rights. People really need to hear this. You know, you think in America that it's all no, 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 no. We get to actually be who we need to be. There might be some pushback, but no, no, no. You need to hear this insanity. So you cannot be an LGBT person in Iraq, no. can you? No. Like, no. <laughs> no, they will just kill you. If, if, if it's not your family, it's like the, the society, the people around you. That's right. No, 
So, so, so you decided. So you decided you needed to leave, and then you, you could just leave. How did you get out of the? How did you get out of Iraq? Um, I was a very good A student. So, uh, but because of mathematics, I didn't make it to be in medical school. So I took my mom out. Please, this is my dream. I'll kill myself. Just help me. Well, so they just sent me to Ukraine. Uh, I started studying medicine in there. Not because I want it, because I need to change myself, but I don't know how. The funny thing is, I thought Ukraine, this is Europe. When I got there and started asking by researching on Google, YouTube, uh, they told me, this is worth that country. We don't have that. No, it's a big no. Ukraine, Russia, no, we don't do that. So I studied medicine. <laughs> I did it by myself. <laughs> no doctor. <laughs> I don't know. I'm alive. This is good. <laughs> wow. So I did it. Yeah. So I played. So you see that? No, because that is, you know, that's how we have to survive. We have to figure it out on our own. So you had to figure it out on your own. I have to. I mean. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so so I've seen pictures of you before, uh, before you transition, and your transition is so powerful. I would like to know. So when you got to the Ukraine, you were still looking female. Uh, yeah, for actually for three years, uh, I was studying. Every, I was asking the professors, but they were looking at me like crazy. What do you th What do you mean? No, there is no such thing. So um, I talked with my parents the last time. And they told me, if you open this subject again, it's going to be very bad. So I told them, okay. Uh, I stopped contacting them, which is um, caused a very big problem. They contacted the embassy of Iraq and Ukraine, and they started searching for me through people. They have people everywhere, like in charge of uh, like the community. Uh, and some guy came and he was like, okay, your parents called the embassy, you've done a horrible thing, like you need to get back to Iraq. I told him, okay, I packed my stuff, no money, nothing, moved to another city and just hide for a year. I went to the pharmacy, I asked them for tests. Um, uh, in this situation, I left the medical school, so I need to be legal there, you know, to buy uh, stuff and go out and police will stop you at the train station or everywhere. So I went to the immigration, uh, the uh, UN in Ukraine. I told them nobody heard me out there. So I thought, okay, let me put them in front of the fact. So I did my transition, not surgical, just on the hormone therapy. And then I went and there was, okay, it's not you. We have to do a DNA test. We, <laughs> we have to fingerprint you because a person who changed their gender like this, you might kill someone in Iraq and this is your way to hide your identity so they did all of that and nothing came out like i have no record at all same in here in sweden when i just came because it's like a very um, scary situation like a person have one document and uh, he looks like another person at all mm -hmm. they, they didn't believe it was me so this is yeah so uh with the yeah, so so therapy. I can see that. I mean, of course, of course they're gonna do that because you pass so well, and you came in as looking like a female, and now you're coming looking like a man, and they don't believe you. So yeah. so of course that makes complete total sense. So they did, so they did the test, and they found out that you have no record. So did they help you change your documents? Uh, this is the way they tricked me. Like the DNA test there for this kind of situation um, cost a lot. She told me, okay, go pay, and then I'll help you to change your identity. I went like a fool doing that, and then waited for three months, came out, like I have a DNA of a, of a female. So she told me, oh no, we can't do that. The only way is Europe for you. Europe, US, Canada, you can't go there. I told her, okay, my passport is expired. If I want to renew it, I have to go back to Iraq, and that will get me killed in the airport. Uh, I, get, I gave her all numbers of my family. She called with the translator she have, uh, Arabic guy, and she heard it. After that, she started helping me. She told me, look, all I can do just to keep you legal, you come with this paper every three months, I renew it, and that's it. Under the protection of Ukraine, but you have to be careful. There's a lot of calls about you. So, yeah. I couldn't work or anything like um, with the government, uh, like just have a bank account, a driver license, no. But I started hustling, cooking, cutting hair, um, helping other people. So I made a living. I was living over like for 40 years like that. 
like for, for now when so I you came couldn't to you Sweden, couldn't sorry you couldn't have a bank account you couldn't have anything because your identification still said female and look at you so people thought I mean that I mean so you basically kind of had to live underground for 14 years for 14 years yeah and um, wow. like even Instagram my Instagram was closed uh, no contact with people because they will find me and if the immigration service in Ukraine told me be careful please because there are a lot of not only for the um, embassy they ask in, in the uh, medical uh, universities because I'm a medical student, so they ask in the universities and they get in call. Do you know this guy? Do you know like this girl or anything? So I have to go by different names. Like till now, I have like five name. <laughs> names. So yeah, is so that because of your special. parents? Uh, is yeah. that because of your parents looking yeah. for you and putting uh, going to the? My mom have a big connections, so. Yeah, she can get you. <laughs> this is the problem. But now I'm a far away. I think for like 14 years, they already forgot about my situation. Last thing I heard, they went to court. They disowned me. Uh, so I can't get anything from them. And that's it. Yeah. But that's a good thing. You don't want to be connected to them if, they, if they're continually hunting you down. And uh, right, you don't want to be connected. To uh, them, do you? No, 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 <laughs> no. Like now, I'm breathing. Like even now, I'm, I'm in a very hard situation. But like, I I feel like something lifted up off my chest because uh, a paper came to the immigration, like um, international court they made. So I received the paper that they disowned me, and that's it. I can't go back. I can't like ask anything from them, and uh, which is good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not complaining about this. Yeah, so yeah, I lived no, underground for good. 14 years. Yeah, so well, sh gosh, so so now you are 14 years in, and the war in Ukraine starts, right? This is when I first met you. I remember specifically reaching yeah. out. You reached out to me, and then we talked on the um, and the bombs were going off as you were <laughs> talking to me. No, I know it's so insane. Like I was like, is this actually happening? Really? Yeah, I went it, numb. Really, I went numb. It's like I was in a dream. Still, really. Me too. I, I don't Me know, too, something. because I was like, you can't, I mean, okay, so, so imagine now Robert is there and it's, you know, he's there 14 years in a disguise pretty much the whole time, kind of, so, so then the, the war starts and you're like, I, I got to get out of here because you had to, or they might have killed you if they found you, right? Or figured out who you were. Uh, they're killing everybody, actually, yeah, on this yeah, thing. Yeah, but I mean, just because you're trans. Oh, that will be a big problem. Like still now, no, today yeah. I'm getting calls from the immigration in Ukraine. Where are you? Are you safe? Please. Hi. I told them, okay, I didn't tell them that I left the country because my passport is still in there. Um, to prove my identity, I still in, in Sweden, I didn't prove my identity. They just know that like I didn't do a crime, but who I am still nobody knows. So, so Sweden let you in because they're just letting because they're a humanitarian country. So they just even though you didn't have the ID, you could just go into the into the country. This was like a chance for me, <laughs> just to run. I mean, it's a bad situation. Yeah, because you I went know. to Poland. I so, went so, uh, <laughs> from from Ukraine, Ukraine. You went to Poland. Uh, mm -hmm. Not directly. I went from Ukraine to Slovakia. I've been through the jail in there from Slovakia to Prague. Uh, when Terry helped me from Prague, I went to Poland. From Poland, I came to Sweden. Wow! So, Can you see tell how powerful you are? See, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how I know I know all these people, but people were being so generous I mean, with me. I'm like, help! <laughs> four countries, no passport, and I'm alive. <laughs> You know, I, that's the power of community. That's real community. <laughs> when I just put it out and everyone came to the rescue, dude, I just have to tell you that it was so powerful how we all cared about you and we all just yeah, made I, it happen. That makes me proud. That makes me proud of our community. We yeah. actually did something that was super powerful. And yeah. so, so gosh, you went to four um, without any identification. Tell no me, money. You must have been so <laughs> – no money, no – so, gosh – Gosh, I mean, so I mean, I know I'm going to ask you a stupid question, but I mean, you must have been so scared. I didn't sleep the whole time, and when I entered Slovakia, I like they fingerprint me. I asked people online; they were Arabs in line who are students, uh, and their passport at the university. They keep them there. 
and they didn't have a chance they had to run so i asked them they are they letting people in they told me yes like not all but yes if you have like a ticket in ukraine or a problem or um, like a court going on for me i have nothing so i they fingerprint me uh, do you have like a document so i gave them my document the immigration gave me and i like explained it uh, i'm on that protection of ukraine and he was like where's your document who's this i was like it's me he was like okay can you stand there well, I stand for two hours, it was cold, <laughs> I didn't sleep, I was hungry, and then they took me to a room inside of a building and threw me in jail, and they were doing everything in their power just to trigger me. But I, just, I was just, uh, like, I'm used to being humiliated in Ukraine. When I was mm -hmm. doing my document, there was a horrible stuff at, uh, at the hospital. They, they didn't just hand me the paper, they, they did horrible things. So I was spit at, yelled at, you know. So came this officer, give me your document. I gave him my document. He just did this. I started shouting. He was talking to someone uh, on the phone by camera. He was like showing me, throwing stuff at me. I was just sitting calm. But at the end, he can't do anything. I have a clean record. He have to let me out. You know, going out of a country is easier than entering. So they let me out and I was just standing on the street. Where should I go next? <laughs> yeah. So it was horrible. Oh yeah. No, I, I mean, really, the fact that you had to, uh, to, you know, have the humiliation in itself is so degrading and so disgusting. But this is what trans people deal with, you know, especially you're passing as a man and your identification says female or looks like I, I saw what you have. I saw the paper. It's a, your picture of you before. Of course, they're going to be like, who, what? Uh, even I mean, here, just, uh, even here, like here, they're uh, friendly wow. at least. Like I went to the uh, to get my ID, so she was like, "Okay, you need a personal number uh, ID. Do you have any identification? Uh, a photo of your passport? I have a photo of my passport. I gave her. She was like, "Who's this?" <laughs> uh, she was like, "Who the hell is this?" <laughs> it's me. She was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna miss this in the future." <laughs> <laughs> no, I love you know why you know why I love you, dude. Because you have such a great sense of humor. You you have only <laughs> smiled. I, I'm the one who's gonna cry. No. <laughs> You've only smiled through all of it. I mean, even when I talked to you in the middle of the bombing, you were la you were like, I'm scared, dude. But you I know why? It's like you have such. <laughs> Because there are a lot of people have a situation worse than me, like uh, in transition and like uh, straight people. Like I saw a, uh, a kid uh, being thrown under the train while people trying to get out. So I went back, I took him and I was searching. His mom was seeking her grandma. She forget about her kids. This is a situation like only women and kids. I'm, I'm the only guy in this train. And they were asking, where are you going? What's happening? I was like, just silent. So I took this kid, okay, here. Like, well, this is with like regular people. With the transition, how I know you. I remember when I just had my uh, transition, I went on YouTube uh, and I read about your story. How, how I even remember the video when you went under, uh, under when you was um, doing the top surgery and was like, okay, if he did it in a time where people, they didn't know what they doing. I mean, that was scary. <laughs> they have like no knowledge, right? Yeah. <laughs> None. Just put you None. in. Okay, we're gonna None. do that. I, I remember the, the, the like the look on your face. You're just like, you know, lying on the bed. I was like, how oh, can So I, I'm like uh, in the same situation, but in a country. They don't have that. So I was like fortunate to have cancer, to have like tissue removed from my breast. So. So I was like, okay, he's in a very hard situation. So I have to just shut up and go through it, you know, be positive. <laughs> so that's it. Well, I know, but I know, I hear what you're saying, but I just want to, to say that because I do think attitude is everything. And no matter what, if you have, a, you have such a beautiful attitude that I think it's why you're really moving and getting out of the space and you have a powerful voice. Your story is so incredible. It really just is. So, so that, that being said, you finally, I mean, imagine Robert's on the train with all these ladies and they're like, <laughs> what dude? It reminds me when I was in the gynecological office oh 50 God. years ago and they're all like, what is this dude doing in here? It's a really weird, uncomfortable situation. But <clears throat> so then boom, boom, boom. I remember you're in Poland and then you leave and then you, you finally get into Sweden yeah. and then you tell me you're safe. Everything is good but 
everything isn't so good, is it? Uh, no, unfortunately. Well, I thought it was good because when I came, your friend, Miss Alan, who is in um, France, she found a guy here. Uh, he went viral. His name is Frederick Robinson. Uh, uh, in the uh, on the red carpet, uh, people um, mistook him for Jared Leto. This guy. So, see how powerful you are again <laughs> through France, and then here. This guy is very famous. His husband actually he have a, he's uh, the hairdresser of the Queen here. So he told me, okay. They told me I have to help you. You have a job. I just came here. I took a shower, the next day I went to the interview, I went straight to work. I didn't even sleep, <laughs> I have nothing to eat. I was like, okay, let's go. Um, I came here with nothing. They had like here some socks, some stuff, you know, just <laughs> you have to wear something to go to work. Yeah, I started working, but the problem is um, <laughs> with the like financial stuff in here in Sweden with the inflation and everything. Uh, if you search it on Google, like people is getting really good salary, but the salary I'm going to have after five years. So what I'm going to do in this meantime, I'm, I mean, I came, I just went straight to work, but it's not enough. And the living situation, I have nowhere to live. Like I have the money, but the problem is it's, uh, it's not enough. And even if it's enough, there is nowhere to live. So uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do after two weeks from now, actually. Again. So in two weeks, you're losing, in two weeks, you're gonna lose the space you're living in now? Uh, like, yeah. So you're living in a space now and then? Yeah, there's uh, some Swedish people saw my story through you actually, and they called me when I was just coming off the ferry and they told me, okay, we're gonna uh, give you this place for two weeks. Two weeks went from March till now. Um, so they told me, uh, problem here in the system like i still have no bank account no id and no salary i didn't get my salary this is the problem the system is very slow in here um for me to get the documents all uh for uh, like a change in uh, the um the agenda and everything they sent me a mail saying that will take from 12 to 24 months so again is the same yeah so what there's no emergency there's no emergency situation. I, I, I'm going to make some emails after this. But that being said, there's no emergency situation for somebody literally coming from the Ukraine uh, yeah, from yeah. the war. There's no like when I just came okay. here. Uh, but I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. OK, so go on. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I want to know. I just it's, came so here. it seems to me that uh -huh. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, no, no, it's hard because we have a delay. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, so when I came here, the lawyer uh, told me, uh, okay, here they give documents to people who pay tax, so you need to find a job. If you find a job, you'll get the uh, asylum status and travel documents. So this is good. I got a job. If not, so I told him, I heard like they will help you in the like first uh, first steps um all the ukrainian people is coming here ukrainian people who came here every person is receiving only two dollars and a place like you can be out in a room with 10 people you know imagine the kids you know people with different attitudes and it's all women someone having a period or something uh and it's up north for me when i went to the interview um, my officer was like very mad person, but she started crying. She was like, if, I, if my daughter only knew, her, her daughter is a transgender, only knew how easy she's having it in, in this world. Like I have documents being assaulted, being raped and those stuff. I have all the marks uh, medically, like and everything. And she saw it, she started crying. She was like, and you already working? I told her, yeah. So after three months, they just gave me the, um, the status which is good, but uh, if I lived off the system, that will be better, but it will be no documents. I'll just be like in, on you, in, like in Ukraine, on hold. So if you be independent, I went to the welfare uh, two weeks ago. So they told me, unfortunately, you have a job, <laughs> so we can't help you. If you lose the job, we can give you a place to live and uh, you have to search for work later and some money which is it's slow, but I don't want to live like that, you know, <laughs> just sitting, so. Of course not. No, you have pride. I see that about you. You have pride. You don't want to, 
you don't want to just be on the government assistance. I mean, that that's the one thing that really yeah. also attracted me to you. Even when you were in the Ukraine, you never asked me for any money ever, ever. Have you ever asked me for anything? You just asked if I could find somebody to move, but that was different. You know, so I, I know that about you. You're willing to work. You're willing to do all the things you need to do to be this independent person, even under the sort of weight of what you're under, which is hugely, I mean, it's so difficult not to have your identification match your identity to have it say female but you are male is so incredibly humiliating degrading i mean dangerous dangerous and is, especially yeah, the spaces is you've been that's right so so um so now being in sweden have you you've been there since march uh, march that, the 13th that when... i think i came here yeah march so yeah so that's like four months or something like that. And so now it's time for you to move on from Sweden because I, I think that it is not a, a, a place that will you will grow in. And and so I think one of the things I wanted to ask you was, did you want to come to the United States? Yeah, from the beginning, even when I just came here, I was like, okay, I'm tired. Uh, I Like, I'm really tired, but I have to, like, I rest later, I have to, but how? They told me, like, people were writing me, How? Canada, you know, but no, I need to get to the U.S. This is the only place that yes. um, will help me with my documents first, fast. They have a good system. Um, work, like, there are a lot of jobs. I need to learn something. Like, I have a future there. So, what? where is other... You have a future here. You yeah, do. So, you do. You have more of a future here than anywhere. Yeah, but and because we also have great trans rights. We have great trans rights. We have medicine. Okay, so I want to also ask: Are you getting your medicine? Are you getting testosterone? Uh, I went to the doctor. They he was just asking me, "Where did you go to therapy?" I told him I didn't go. My therapy was YouTube. <laughs> he was like thinking I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, who is the doctor? Do you have any contact with your doctor who did this, like, uh, the surgery, the transition? I told him, it's me, I did it. So he was like, okay. So here is your test. <laughs> and we'll meet after three years to change your gender. I was like, why? He said, yeah, we have, like, uh, we passed a bill about separating, uh, uh, like, trans people to change the... Uh, we need to change their um, document first, separate the legal from the medical. So I told them, okay, I already passed the surgery, I already passed the hormone therapy, everything, like the therapist for six months, no, you have to do this. I was like, okay, so in this, in this three years, I still have the same problem. So 14 plus three <laughs> years. Yeah, so it was very disappointed. Look at you. But look at you. I mean, this is ridiculous. I can understand if you came in still looking the other way, like yeah. a female, but you're literally transitioned. So so I also want to go back a little bit real quick because I'm not sure if we all caught it, but you said you had cancer, I remember. And then that that's how you got your breast removed? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, uh, when, breast uh, cancer? Like, I was working and I was working with Arabs. So they were asking, okay, what's wrong with your voice? Why your shoulders started to be bigger? I told them, Okay, I'm going on competitions with bodybuilding. I need to make money. This was my lie there. So I knew I need to hide. So I hide it for a year. Uh, I was taking this testosterone, but the problem is I can buy it. Like just, it's, it's not that easy. You just go and buy it. So I have to get it from places underground. And this is not, you know, that clean. Maybe of before, because of this, maybe because I was like in three wars in Iraq, we were smelling stuff war in Donetsk in 2014 in Ukraine. So I don't know, maybe or stress, like stress can get you diabetes too. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was in the shower and felt a limp in here. So I went to take an ultrasound and she told me, okay, well, I, first I had to talk her so she won't la you know, shower at me because it's like half and half. She, she said, okay, I got you. <laughs> uh, it's good that like, she finished her studies in Germany. So she's, uh, she saw like uh, people like me there. Uh, so um, did the Elta son, she told me, okay, we have, you have to go under surgery now. It's big. I was like, oh, what is big? Like the, the cancer is big. Uh, I told her, which one is it? The, like the bad one, the good one. We don't know. We have to open you. So she told me it's one. I woke up. So I'm cut now from here to here. 
from here to here and from here and lost a nipple too. Uh, I went to the doctor, I told him, like, this is my chance, you know, to make it look like uh, a man. He told me, no, every doctor can do that, but it's illegal in Ukraine. So I will take just a little and that's it. It cost a lot too, like all my savings went to that. So I woke up, I remember he told me, okay, this took us uh, longer than six hours. This is the, the last thing I remember. And then I went to coma. Uh, through the coma, after the coma, I went to the chemical therapy and everything. So that was horrible. I lost all my weight, you know, being nauseous all the time, lost uh, all the hair. I thought I'm gonna die and I have no one to call, you know. He was like, okay, sign a paper and I need numbers to call if someone if something will happen to you. I, I thought I have no one. <laughs> you know, th that was sad. Yeah, so, yeah, but so I passed that, thank God. But this was a chance, you know, so just to look just a little, you know, so I can pass. Gosh, you've been through hell and back, my friend. It's just insane. So, so, so they took your whole breath. They no, take all no, your breaths no. off. Just they, a little. They, Even here, they when I just came and uh, just, they knew about my cancer, they uh, straight away they sent me. Uh, they told me we have to do an ultrasound very fast, very fast. It took them three months. You have to stand in line just to take an ultrasound. So I went. He told me you have to take that out. It's very dangerous, you're on hormones, you don't know. And my mom got cancer, so this is a problem too. Yeah, like, so he told me you have to get a hysterectomy, you have to take all the tissues, it's very bad. So I told him, like, for now I can't. Um, and they don't have the down surgery in here. So it's a problem again, yeah, and I can't do that. I don't know. With, with the amount I'm getting paid, you know, I can't do that all, so. This is crazy. So, 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 do you, so, do you still have uh, cancer? No, in, no, in, I'm cancer free. Theory? But he told me like you have a big chance. So, it's even like even my big mom. Chance. She when she had it, she took her breast, she took her wound and everything away because so like less chance. I have them all, and I'm taking testosterone. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It could be so. Oh gosh, my friend. So, so, so you haven't really had top surgery. You've had to deal with yeah, this uh, binding. Uh, no, no, binding? no. Because like I built uh, a lot of muscles, so people think, oh, you have a good yeah, chest. Yeah, bodybuilding. Like, oh, <laughs> uh -huh. if they only knew. <laughs> 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 It's <laughs> so funny, dude. Yeah, no, no, no. I know. I know because you, you're you're so jacked that it just looks like yeah. a big chest. So yeah, that's a good thing. I mean, that 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 will help you until we can get you into top surgery. Then that yeah. that's okay. But you know, you're just so passable. Nobody would ever. That's why people are shocked when they're like, "What is this?" and and, and that. So, I think the next thing that I wanted to discuss with you is how we as a community can um, come to your help as a uh, part of our family because I think it, that's why I really wanted to bring you on as well your story is so fascinating but also you know here's a brother of ours that's you know really just you're such a great human and that I think you could be so great in the world and you could give so many great things back that we need to help you figure out how to get you to the United States. So I'm asking right now, I'm putting this out there to the world and I'm saying that our brother here, Robert, needs our help. And whatever that means to anybody, whatever that means in the comment section or sending um, us emails or whatever in knowledge you know of what we need to do. So, you know, Robert isn't a guy who asks for things. I'm asking. <laughs> so just so you know, he's, really, I'm the one this asking. This is like the last step, I'm asking. really. This is the last step I need. <laughs> At least an advice on how or where, you know. I, I have no clue. And my brain is not working now because like I'm, I'm stuck again. <laughs> so, and I'm afraid I'm a new country in here. It's a new system. Me, I, it's like I, I went out from That's jail right. because I, I don't know what and how, like my friend gave me I, a credit card. I don't know how to use it <laughs> because I never had that. Yeah, 14 wow. years is a very long time, really. ID or something. I have a picture. On. Oh my God, it's like half your life. Really? How no. old are you again? I'm sorry. You're 32. Yeah, no, are you 32? 32. Yeah. 32. You're, yeah. you're a youngster. Yeah, yeah. So, so I know. I mean, it, on some level, you are like literally. Um, 
um, you are literally stuck in time uh, for 14 years. You are stuck in time. You know, all this new technology, all this new stuff, everything's happening. And then you are living in this sort of world of having to be secretive. And, and, you know, I don't know if this is too personal, but how about relationships? Have no. you had any relationships People with any think other you person? You're freaking there for that. No. I can't, and I'm very, like, I distant myself from people there. I just go, do a job, and I'm hustling, I'm working for myself. And you can you can do anything by yourself, no problem, you know. Um, now I have to adjust to this new society. It's like a culture shock, really. There are stuff I don't know how to use, and I don't know what to do. Like, I'm just, uh, the, other, the other day, I just wanted to go to the bathroom really hard. No, just standing. I don't know how the door open. Oh, you have to need to have a credit card. You put it to the stuff. You pass the code and go. And a guy and a girl just sold me. And they, they really, I think they just, you know, felt very bad for me. And he was like, okay, I'll pay for this. No problem. You, yeah. you need to, where, where, were you, where you come from? I told him, okay, I came from Ukraine. Yeah, well, he was like, okay, oh, no, we have that in Ukraine, but it's me. You know, I don't have all this stuff. I just need like the simple rights for people and that's it you know a car to rent a car that would be cool i need to do that <laughs> i don't want to be 60 you know or 70 and just getting my driver lesson i my gender changed <laughs> really i don't i want to do something in life but yeah it's going to happen. Don't worry. Don't worry, Robert. It's going to happen. I, I, I already know it. I'm, I'm determined. <laughs> if it's the last Thank thing you. I do, I'll get you really? to the United States. You, Thank you. you know that. No, I care about you a lot. I, I think you can do a lot for our community. I think young people can see what you struggled to get to. And I honestly, you know, I, I think one of the things I want to say here is struggle. Struggle is hard. We all have to struggle. But, you know, struggle also helps you understand how how what you're achieving is 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 light and is freedom for you and the reason you know that also is because of the struggle on some level and i think it's why you are so, so happy and grounded even with the little yeah i don't need a lot have, really i just need just a, a happy little person. because i never That's seen right. a lot too. so right. i'm like i'm thankful i'm grateful for this no problem like yeah i came yes. here yes. Even yes, the officer was telling me, you don't need to hide it. You have to say it's a free country. Uh -huh. And people like, let's go to bars. Let's go like to this gay place. You, you, you need to, you know, know people. You have friends. This is not Ukraine. I'm having a problems. I need to <laughs> get pain to get a place to live, to adjust how. And I'm just like, I can't chill, you know, being and like everyone is happy, but well, no, you don't no. feel safe. <laughs> I need to adjust. Right. I mean, you know, and there's a lot of Arabs in here. Yeah, because you don't <laughs> yeah. feel safe. And that too. I mean, that could be very scary. You know, we have a very large Iraqi population here in Los oh. Angeles, where I live too. We we do so. Yeah, even that, you know, I think when we get you here, I can, I don't know if you want to be connected to, to your culture or whatever you call it at this point. I mean, you have, you've been away from Iraq for how long now? Uh, 20 years 2008 or, or 9. That's it. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so you haven't seen any oh, of no. your family, your brothers, no, your sisters, so your, yeah. your nobody, Imagine your cousins. Like I oh, have no, man, like that's... I have four brothers and no. sister, and other sister. Yeah, like it's very. I left when they were just little. Now you know, I think they are men. Sometimes you know, I go into Instagram. I just need to find like how they look. I don't even remember how they look. It's very sad, you know. And just being by yourself, and I want to talk this with someone, and I can't. I have no one. Um, when I just came here, they introduced me to people from Iraq, and some gay guys in here. But uh, you know. It's funny. Um, now they're looking at me like I'm lower from them because I'm not financially the same. They always like going to, you know, the bars and stuff, you know, showing off. I just came here and like I don't have, I don't, I didn't even have a chance to take my stuff with me from Ukraine. So, you know, that's fine. So I was just asking them, hey, please, do you know any place to rent or something? No. <laughs> I was sad. <laughs> you know, they don't owe me anything, but just, you know, I'm wow. new in here. So go, no, you don't need to be here. It's very they, they bad could. country. They like, um, it's, uh, in the winter, it's very bad. It's cold. I came from Ukraine. It's like, 
have the ear. So I told them, no, it's fine for me. You know, if you have the mentality, like if you like the place, you'll like it. Uh, you, you'll be in heaven, but in your brain, if you don't like it, that's it, you know? So, yeah, so no problem. That's right. So when you left, when you left, that's right. When, I remember when you left the Ukraine, I'll <laughs> never forget the bombs, dude. I remember the house shaking. I'm like, oh my God, this is unreal. And then I remember you just said, I'm leaving, dude. I'm leaving. And and then that's true. You What did you leave with? Uh, just the clothes well, on your back? Know, I, and that was I wasn't it. planning to leave a that day. I thought, okay, let me just wait a week because I need like to get m money somehow, you know, and stuff. Maybe I can help people or let me yeah. just sit here. Maybe I'll go to Lviv, there's no bombs in there. So maybe I'll go there and just live there because I was so afraid of going through the, uh, uh, what do you call it? When you uh, enter a new country, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. In in immigration. Those people, yeah. In immigration. Like it's like or, a, it's not yeah. airport, but you know, when you go by a car through another country, because I had a horrible experience with those guys inside of the city. Always, I like renew my documents in there. But the light went off, and I was like, "Okay, I lived in Donetsk, uh, Ukraine, in 2014. They have the same war that's happening here. Went for eight years, and I was like, okay, this place is gonna be bombed. I need to get out. When the uh, the lights went off, I have to get out. So I just got out. I took my documents." And went, made, made it to the bus, uh, like the bus station. They told me there's no bus. You have to go to the yeah. train station and don't wait here because it's dangerous. Okay, so I was walking for two hours and the bomb's going. There's no taxi, nothing. I made it there. I get a call from my neighbor. She told me, okay, the house is gone. I was like, oh, my stuff. <laughs> I love that room. <laughs> yeah. So I told her, is there any people in there? She told me, no, everybody went to, into the metro station and they ran. So it's good. Yeah, the problem is my place is like uh, oh, Kharkiv yeah. is 40 kilometers from uh, Russia. It's not that far. So when they throw from Uzhgara, it will go to Kharkiv first. That's south of So I'm from there. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, wow. What a shame. And then all the people, did you make any friends at all? At all? Like, I guess in your in your apartment, your uh, neighbor, no, but you didn't have no, any actually, like, The guys, people, yeah. People they don't have any idea i mean me too because i'm always like uh, yeah uh, surround when i came here one guy at the work at the job he told me um do you pretend like this i told him how like you more manly than me i told him no but but i i forget about this stuff i have to be like this like when i start transitioning people like people around me men around me they just like men you know you can't do anything like that being soft or something you'll just be kicked out so i forget i have to be like this yeah so this is one another reason why people here so you like, so you had like, to with me they don't think like okay maybe he's not a trans maybe he's something else so yeah oh no nobody would ever know ever in a million even your voice my voice is very tranny no ah, like <laughs> but that being said you are there's no way anybody would ever that's why they're shocked they're like what dude but i understand you had to really put on the uh for lack of a better word act you had to put on the you know very macho man i went face big so because i was have any beaten idea up always when i was a little you know maybe this is like a a, a trauma i have yeah. like a, I, I, my mom threw me from the third uh, yeah. you know the third uh, floor because i was like just crying i don't want to wear this or something i wouldn't i don't want to play with girls i want to play yeah. football or something so uh maybe that's a trauma i went you know i became very big so no one will mess with me also i'm a very peaceful person but maybe it's a trauma i don't know what happened or genetics you know well no it's a lot of things it's a lot of things. I mean, it's just how you want to present to the world so you, you will stop getting bashed. So, you know, I heard in in Iran that they do the surgeries for free. Is is that something I have no idea, but happens? I saw in the news that two guys get killed because they uh, are gay, actually. I have no idea. Gay. They um, don't like gay people there, but but I heard if, they, if you wanted to, you um, could actually get a sex change. Uh, paid wow. for by the government because they don't want you to be gay. They would much uh -huh. rather you be a man or a woman. So, you know, I'm wondering why Iraq uh, doesn't kind of, you know, being a Muslim country, right. kind of doesn't want to do the same thing and help its people just, 
Because it goes against the religion, right? It goes against the yeah. Muslim religion, yeah. right? This is the, like the yeah. first thing it's I religious. did when I just came to Ukraine. I changed my religion because, okay, how are you saying this is a very peaceful religion and you're just bashing people, killing people, you know, and other horrible stuff? And look what happened in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I know it's horrible. I never get hurt from someone like Christian yeah, no, or I Jewish it, or anything else. You know, it's only from our people. Yeah. Yeah. So from Muslim. Uh, yeah, that your people. I mean, I get it. All religions have their bad sides. So you know, the, the stuff yeah, that's very but, fundamentalist yeah, so. are really, really that way. Because we have lots of Muslims here who are great, beautiful people who probably don't believe that stuff that's going. A on lot in the of country, people, right? Don't but do those that. people yeah. have been sort of indoctrinated. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't do that. That's you know the misconception of all Muslims no. are bad is ridiculous. No. I have lots of Muslim friends yeah. here, by the way. It's not true. It's how you are and where yeah. you're living and. You know, yeah. your country pushes that on, on, on them. I mean, your mother, I, I feel bad because I bet if your mother wasn't indoctrinated into that hardcore Muslim. Belief, no, she's she, not. She wouldn't feel that way about you, but it's her religion. Actually, she is not. Yeah. But the problem is oh. uh, the first thing you hear when you say something like this, you know, about the LGBT there, what is people going to say? It's because of people, people, right. the neighbors. The yeah. shame, That's the right. you, you, you're always guilty of the shame. Oh, it's like, oh my God. Yeah, they're worried about the neighbors. That's that's very American too. People are always worried about what everybody else thinks about them. It's just a shame. I hope one day that we can oh, reunite you with your family. <laughs> that would be so amazing. <laughs> no, don't be. <laughs> Once we get you to the United States, it's different. It's different for you here. You're you're very you're you're going to be very surrounded. I and, hope. And safe. Yeah, I hope so, really. You know I don't that. know how, but I you hope. will. I you mean, will. I mean, I'm dreaming about this at night. Oh, I know it's gonna. It's happen. like I'm living right now. I know it's not now. It's like it will take a very long time. But I was like, oh, I'm gonna take like a very small cabin. I'm gonna live in it. I'm gonna work this, do this. I'm contacting people about jobs. <laughs> oh, crazy. <laughs> Hey, you know what? That's how you, that's why you are where you are. Dreaming is beautiful. Thinking about the forward and the future, manifesting what you want. You've been doing it and that's, it's taking a long time, friend, oh. but when you get it all, you are going to be so like powerful. You just need the tools. We need to give you the tools yeah. and then, you know, that, that's that. So, oh gosh, Robert, I really feel so happy Thank to have you for helping me. And I, I remember the first bombs. I was like, who can yeah, I contact? I just, and I was like, Okay, let me write my role model. Maybe he have a blue, like a blue something in, in his instead. But maybe <laughs> I hope I was like right. And he was just hi. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> the bomb is going up. I'm dancing. <laughs> oh my god, you kidding? <laughs> I know. It actually, well, you changed, changed my, my life really. because it was just so. You know, here I sit in my. Well, you know, I sit in my comfortable space here in the world and I'm very blessed on many levels. So I feel so happy that you reached out to me. It's, it's fate. It's fate and it's yeah. the universe. And I do believe those things are real. So how, okay, so people, I'm going to put Robert's um, uh, email and, and how we can contact him and you can put comments here. And I need everyone to just, even if you just think of one thing, put it here. We really need to do our service with this guy. And I guarantee you, nobody will regret once we get this guy here to the States, he's going to be a powerhouse. And, you know, um, I just really Thank value you your much. friendship, Robert. And uh, do you have anything well, that you need to say I'm here because before of we go? People, like, really, do you want to really, say I'm anything I'm alive because of there? people. Re like, uh, uh, social media and people. And thank you for I humbleness know. because, you know, famous people don't do that. <laughs> so thank you very much. Really. You know, you're so down well, to earth. Really. I hope this camera will come back yeah. to you like a million times. Thank you very much. You really saved a life. It did. It already Thanks. did. I have an awesome life. <laughs> and, you know, and then Thank having you. friends like you Thank in my you. life, we're going to be friends forever. So, so th those are the important things for me to be here and for my, my community is seeing these kinds of connections all while all this other nonsense is happening in the community that you wouldn't <laughs> even believe. And it's just so insane that people are wasting everyone's time arguing about who's trans and who's not. And I'm like, no, no we got real like, trans people guys. Just like, need, like, yeah, what people is wrong? Just everyone's need arguing. Tolerate one another is different. That's what makes us special, right? That's so, right. I don't know. 
Yeah. We're special. That's right. We're special. Well, Robert, I really sending you a ton of love, and we'll be I'll be contact off of this, and I'm gonna put all your contact here. Thank and, you uh, very let's much. Let's see what Thank happens you. next, okay? And anybody has any questions, you'll be able to reach out to Robert. He's a super sweet guy. Remember, like, subscribe, mm -hmm. comment, do all those cool things that you're doing. Yeah.